dive, and already I can see dead salmon. There's two right here. There's one out in the water there. There's one just jumped. I don't know if you saw that or not. It was with some trepidation that I dove on July 2nd. I talked to the lifeguards. They told me that the water temperature was high at 72 degrees. I saw fish floating, dead fish floating in the river. And I had been in the water two days earlier and seen a few dead fish. Uh, Normally when I dive here, I'm really excited and ready to go in the water and enjoy the dive. This one was different. This one was a little bit uneasy. So as I prepared for the dive, I was a little bit worried about what I'd find. Now what I'm going to be doing is going upstream from here, which is to the left in the photo, and checking out the high place up here, and then I'll head back down uh, downstream a little ways and go underneath the uh, rapids. There's an island out in the middle that you can just barely see on the top there. Uh, as I went underwater, I didn't see anything initially out of the ordinary. I swam up looking for anything that could be there. Because I don't go this direction too often, uh, at one point you, you don't know exactly where you are in the water column, and so I had to surface to find out exactly where I was. This is a little bit of a different place because uh, the water, the river goes around an island that's just upstream of me right here. So I came up, looked around, and then went back down to investigate the higher part of the, the pool here. This is the upper reaches of the pool, and not finding much, I turned around and then I saw my first dead salmon. I reached out, grabbed it so that you can get a, an idea of the size of this fish. This, this is a big fish. I surfaced again to get my orientation again, and then went back down and started downstream. Now you can see I'm at about six foot depth here. current kind of whisks me around here pretty fast. Eventually, I come to where the rapids are about ready to enter, and I come to this tree. This tree's been there for over four years, and this time it had a dead salmon on it. This dead salmon has been there for a number of days. As you can see, it's pretty well deteriorated, but as I, I looked at it, it had an egg mass still in it, which meant that the, the, the salmon had not spawned. Now you can see I'm hanging on pretty good because the current's fairly large right here. 
that's a little bit better picture of the uh, egg mass and the insides of the salmon. Pretty well deteriorated salmon, uh, probably within the last week or so it had gotten there. Now I'm going over the, the tree, I'm going to drift down a little ways, and then I'm going to go underneath the, the rapids. underneath the rapids going a bit crossed and downstream. Now the reason you're seeing the, everything on the side is because when you're swimming underneath this, you don't swim oriented the normal way you do in a swimming pool. You've got to orient yourself to the water current and then you can swim across current and downstream. And that's what I've done. Now what I'm looking for is that area where the red side shiners are spawning, and I find it. Now they haven't started spawning yet, they're, they're gathered though, you can see the little guys. And I'm holding on with my left arm and looking backwards, which is why everything looks like it's on its side. These fish are gathering uh, and soon going to be mating, but I can tell that they're not quite there yet because they haven't developed their red sides. The red side shiner is only red when it's spawning. During other times of the year, it's kind of a green with a gold stripe down the side. Now I've taken the camera off my head so that you can see me in relationship to the fish and you can see the size of the fish. These guys are about you know, four, maybe some of them are six inches long, but uh, most of them are about four inches long. I've been following these fish for over 20 years and what I'm hoping to do is to get some video of them actually spawning. Now out of the corner of my eye, I see something I don't like. You can see it just to the left of my head there. There we go. You can see this fish. And then I see more of what I don't like. I don't know exactly how to explain this. This is really something. Turn the camera and you can see what I'm seeing. Wow. Look at that. These fish were killed by the water temperature rising. Because it's hard to get an idea of how large these fish are, I'm putting the camera down and I'll give you an idea here in just a moment by picking one up, the one in the foreground. This fish is approximately three feet long. another one. Really sad to see. I'm going downstream now. Just a little ways. I went back upstream to try and find 
my red side shiners again and they still weren't spawning but what I found was a live fish that was belly up. This is a salmon that's dying and again this is heat stress caused. The poor guy is still trying to figure out a way out of the, the warm temperature but he's not going to make it. This is how those fish got there. I'm going to head back downstream again. The fish actually started moving a little bit more, moved himself somewhat downstream, but wasn't able to make it. I got some close-ups of him. You can see his gills are still moving. Then I decided to head back downstream. Downstream a bit further, I found a couple more fish. This is quite a ways further downstream. another one. As I swim down further, here's another one. This one's a small one that probably was trying to go back to the ocean and didn't make it. I'm nearing my exit point now. Headed for the surface. A look at where I'm going and then duck back down. And now it's time to get my fins off and get out of the water. Anyway, that was my dive, um, very sad dive for me. <laughs>